you don't have to chase the money. The money's there for you. All you have to do is abide by the rules. I think everybody has that in, in their work. They're wondering, is this really what I want to do? And then you have to say, well, if you don't do this, what am I going to do? Try to focus on the positive. They didn't know what to expect. I've been in it 28 and a half years now. You might regret when you think, okay, I got a great pension now. So maybe you regret it that way, you know? But other than that, I think everything worked out okay. We got married in 85, and that's when I started driving a cab, basically. I decided, let's first get the, my cab license, then after we get married and come back from a honeymoon, then I can start the new uh, life. These days, I don't think you can do what we did because I think houses are more expensive. I don't think one person can, will be able to manage. And then some of them are, are, are immigrants. I've heard that were in their country, they were doctors, they couldn't find a job, so they're doing this, and maybe they don't like that. And maybe some of them don't like talking to people. My marks weren't high enough, and I didn't study enough to, to go to university. That's why. Some guys are in it for the short term, and then some guys are not in it for the long term to make it like a profession because they might not like it. They're in, just, they're just filling in time until, you know, something better comes up. In the cab business, you're trying to get them in and out faster. You can go to your next call. When you're a cab driver, you don't have to escort anybody. set a certain standard of how you want to work and how you want to represent yourself in the industry, you know. In order to change how maybe people look at you or the, the, the image you're trying to project, I started, I said to myself, okay, every day now I'm going to wear a tie to work. So I started September of 1999 that I'm going to be wearing a tie to work every day. If you're, if you're dressed properly and you have a clean car, then people think, oh yeah, this guy's serious and he's a businessman. He's not just driving up and down the streets acting foolish or, you know. You know, you, you'd make mistakes at the beginning because I remember one day I couldn't understand what the dispatcher, what order he gave me. And I was too scared to ask him again for it. But then I finally got enough, you know, courage to ask him again, can you say that address again because they couldn't understand you. So you have to learn how to book properly to get a run. Because if you don't, then somebody else will get the run. So you have to, you have to figure all these things out.
Is that hand good because there's a lever here? You can put your seat back a touch more. Let's go this way and avoid a bit of traffic. I'm just gonna get my apple. I think to get my apple. It's apple time. <laughs> apple time. It's okay, the, good, the kids are taking care of you right now. Yes. Thank God for that, right, sir? Yes. You don't need money as long as you have your health and your yes. kids that love you, you're, then you're the wealthiest man in the world. Am I right, sir? Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. Right. I'll tell you what my mother told me. She says, don't cry for me when I'm dead, but love me now that I'm alive. When I'm dead, I don't care what you do. Yes. She's right. Am I right, sir? We gotta find special oil for me, sir. I'm from Greece, so we have good olive oil. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you some. Your wife's gonna put it all over, and you're gonna be able to move. Okay. How's that? <laughs> you're gonna grab. We're gonna come a little bit here. Close the door, so then we can go that way. Okay, man. Okay. See, you have to. To me, you have to have a clean car. But say, why do you have to have a? Well, because you're in a way you're living in your car. So if you're, not, if you're a bum at home, then you're going to be a bum in your car. If your car smells at home, then you smell at home. So if you look at it, okay, today I'm going to go out and have a good day. It's going to be a good day. Today will be a good day because you're positive, not negative. Idiots don't have their lights on and it's raining. So if you want to have a good day, you're going to be positive. If you want to have a negative day, you're going to be negative. Even if you've had problems at home with your wife, you cannot take that into the cab. You leave it home. The scary part about it was some days you were thinking, am I going to make enough money? When you first start, you, you, you're not doing as well as people out there for 10 years or even five years or three years. So you have to learn how to, how to work as a cab driver, where, where to go at different times of the days, you know what area to work, what area to avoid. So you learn that through time, you know. I tried to keep out of those areas, so-called the bad neighborhoods of Toronto. You know when it's lonely, if nobody's getting in your car and you're going up and down the street thinking, is anybody ever gonna take a cab? Life in a cab can be tough, it can be rewarding, it can be interesting. And um, if you like meeting people, it can be fun. It can wear you down if you get into bad habits. You might not be able to make the money that you usually make. I decided, you know what? This can work if I make it work and if I try to, like, try to make a decent, if I, if I treat it like a business and try to, uh, yeah, treat it like a business and try to do better in it, I, I, I can survive in the business, you know, if you treat it right. And if you don't, then I don't think you can survive or make a decent living at it.